Hello, this is a brief introduction to the iPod and MP3 player capabilities of the Alpine IDA X305 stereo. I'm not going to talk about the other functionalities. Uh, suffice to say, it's got the standard AM, FM radio type stuff. Uh, it does not have a CD player, um, but the reason I was, in, I was interested in this unit was for the uh, iPod interface, and so that's what I'm going to talk about here. Start by pushing the power button, and the radio turns on and starts playing music. I'll turn in the volume here just to make it easier to talk over the music. Uh, the uh, most notable feature of the Alpine stereo is how easy it is to search through your iPod. That's been the Achilles heel of most of the stereos that I've seen uh, that try to interface to an iPod. So on the Alpine you push this big button in the middle and that brings up this um, main menu where you can search by playlists, artists, albums, or songs. You can also search by genre, uh, by podcast or audiobook, but I don't have those features turned on right now. So let's go to uh, artists. Um, one common problem of iPod interfaces is they don't really deal with large lists very well. And uh, so I was curious to see how the Alpine handled that problem. You can see there's a ring around this middle button. If you push that ring down, you can turn it and scan through the list very quickly. So in this list I have probably several hundred artists, but I can jump through it 10% at a time in either direction. So you can get through the list very quickly. If you hit the function button, you can go to alphabetic search, where we can search by the first letter of the artist. So if I want to find Pink Floyd, I go to the P's, and then there's Pink Floyd. Very easy. Um, the other iPod type functionality here, um, you can search by albums, of course, and with the same search functionality of searching alph alphabetically. You can search by songs, playlists. Or just tell the uh, tell the unit to shuffle everything, all the all the music. When you're playing a song, you can either view the song information and the album art. If you don't have album art associated with the song, it'll just show the Alpine logo. Or you can just show the album art again, just the logo in this case, or the clock. You can fast forward through a playlist. In this case, since I've just chosen one song, obviously there's 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 nothing else to uh, show here. Let's go back and pick a different album. Hopefully, one that has more than one song on it. Okay, so here we have several. Now I can fast forward through all those songs. Of course, you can play and pause. So that's all, all about what, what you'd expect to see from a good iPod interface. I'm, I'm very pleased with how this interface works. Uh, the iPod itself just plugs into a cable that you can route through your glove box. Here I've got my iPod Nano, and you can see it's plugged into a USB cable. The unit also supports USB keys, uh, and that was a feature that I was interested in, in trying out, so I'll show you how that works. I'll unplug the iPod here, and I have a USB key, which I will plug in. So you can see that it uh, searches the key for all the music and starts playing right away. Now here's where the here's where the interface kind of uh, falls down a little bit. If we try to search through the USB key, all we get is a list of every song on the key. It's not sorted in any reasonable fashion. You can't search it in any reasonable fashion just kind of has all the songs right there. So if you have half a dozen songs or a couple dozen songs, that might work pretty well. If you've got hundreds of songs or thousands of songs, that won't work so well. So I was pretty disappointed by that. I would have liked to have seen them use um, IP3 tag or MP3 uh, ID tag information to uh, search a little better. But otherwise, it works just like the iPod. You can pick a song and it'll show the 
artist and the title and the album. You can switch back and forth between that view and the clock view. You don't see album art in this view. Uh, you can also adjust the audio settings for the uh, music, so bass level, treble level, kind of all the usual stuff you'd expect to see. You can also uh, set some preferences for the radio, so I'll look at that real quickly. If you hold down the function button, you can see the radio preferences. Bluetooth is first. I don't have Bluetooth enabled, so we'll skip that. And there's uh, some information about how to display the clock. Clock mode, set, set the time, set the calendar, that sort of thing. You can change the display. Here you can change whether it shows blue or red. So here you can see the buttons just turn blue. You can change whether or not the screen dims when you turn the headlights on. So I'll turn on the headlights so you can see how that looks. You can see how it dims there. Change how dim it goes. Level 1 is not very dim. Level 3 is very dim. You can change how the text scrolls. Uh, type 1, Type 2, and off. It's too bad they didn't actually include some meaningful uh, words here besides Type 1 and Type 2. You can change the uh, background. You can change the color. Again, you have Type 1 and Type 2, which happen to mean red and blue. So you can go to blue there. I prefer red, a little bit less glare. And you can also uh, download a custom wallpaper, uh, which I have not done, but I think some of the kids nowadays do that sort of thing. So you can always customize your uh, radio that way. My illumination back on red. The iPod settings, you can change which, uh, which search uh, words you have available to the iPod. Playlists, artists, albums, podcasts, audiobooks, genres, composers, and songs. Uh, I use just songs, uh, albums, artists, and playlists. And then audio, you can set some more audio settings in here. So that's basically the, the, the main iPod interface um, for the uh, Alpine IDA X305. Uh, overall, I'm very pleased with the radio. Uh, it's, it's easy to use, it interfaces well with the iPod. My primary um, area of concern is the bad interface with the USB key. I wish it uh, had a better interface for that, um, but I can forgive that. Uh, I paid $300 for this unit uh, locally. It retails for $350, and I've seen it on Amazon for as little as $270, uh, and elsewhere online for the same price. So it's, it's fairly affordable, um, has a lot of nice features, has a great display, uh, and is really easy to use. I would highly recommend it if you, uh, if you use your iPod while driving. Thank you.